Good evening, everybody. Um, it's an honor, and uh, I think God has chosen the right time for uh, Teresa and I to, to give our testimony of our marriage, and, and a lot of it will be about uh, my life. Um, some of you have heard Teresa's testimony. Uh, I am excited to share uh, some of mine, and I hope to uh, make it a short version so that we're not here all night. Uh, we do have baptisms to uh, to attend as well. So we practice it a couple times. Yeah, so we, we've both we did made narrow notes. It down and, a little bit. Uh, so I want to open up with prayer really quick. Uh, Father, we're thankful uh, for this time tonight. Uh, I just ask you to calm my nerves, calm uh, Teresa's nerves, and open the hearts of this congregation. Uh, this church family that we have and that we love. Uh, bring your Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus. Uh, thank you for leaving the 99. Amen. Uh, so, quickly, as quick as possible, my story. Uh, I grew up in Iowa. Uh, until I was the age of 12, uh, lived in a, a good home, secure home, a Christian home, went to church, had church family, friends that would come over, play cards with the parents, um, just a, a really good childhood. Um, about the age of 10, I was the age of 10, my parents started having troubles, and by uh, the age of 12, they were divorced because... Uh, my dad had decided to uh, follow the life of a homosexual and leave the family. Uh, my mom moved my brother and I out here to Colorado in 1985 when I was 12 years old, and I've been here ever since. Um, used to get good grades in school uh, back in Iowa when, when the family was good, you know. Uh, and then I stopped caring. When we moved out to Colorado, I got involved with um, friends that didn't care about school either, and we'd go play football and all that stuff. I had all the things up here, but never applied myself. I didn't do homework and, and stuff. Got kicked out of my math class because I didn't have my homework. Uh, she's like, I'm tired of you. Get out. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I used to uh, go out after curfew, vandalize, you know, just uh, stuff. I was a bad kid. Um, although I did go to church. And uh, one of my friends was a pastor's kid, and at the age of 12, I was baptized, um, believed in Jesus, accepted him into my life. Um, but at the age of 16, I stopped going to church so much, uh, stopped hanging out with um, uh, at least that influence of my life. And um, in my 20s, I spent my time in karaoke bars, uh, getting drunk, driving, crazy drunk. Um, a lot of those things had to do with uh, self-esteem issues. I would just go driving like crazy out on roads. I would crash my vehicles. And uh, God had saved me from many uh, death experiences that I could have had. Um, I always had a dream a life dream of having what I experienced back in Iowa before the divorce of my parents as a father. Man, uh, I, want a, I want a Christian home. Uh, totally went the wrong way to, to get that dream accomplished and always thought it was out of reach. Like, I'm being cheated out of this whole thing. Like, Jesus is going to come back before I ever experience this this uh, this dream, um, but going down uh, the wrong road and looking for love in all the wrong places, you know, relationships, um, until uh, I was about 30 years old, uh, where I had gotten into a relationship uh, with someone that I knew through uh, my work, through my best friend. Uh, she was my boss's daughter. Uh, she was my best friend's sister, um, but she was married. also married. 
separated, husband was out of the house, and things seemed to be clicking in this, this situation where I thought, oh, well, this is a God thing. She's a Christian. You know, this, this has got to be my dream come true. It's, it's going to happen. And, and uh, was very emotionally uh, just crazy about this thing. Well, I started going crazy um, because it was so serious. I thought I might lose my job. I might lose my best friend. Um, didn't know if her husband was going to come beat me up. And I started hadn- having dreams. Uh, went through seven straight nights of nightmares, what I would call it, where I woke up in pools of sweat. I had to uh, get a, a massive bath towel just to lay it down and go back to sleep because it was so wet on my, my bed. I wasn't wet in my bed <laughs> like that. But, uh, yeah, I could comfortably put a towel back over it and go to sleep. Uh, but it was literally driving me nuts. I was going crazy and losing my mind over this situation. I was living with a couple. Um, th- the, the guy I had lived with for 10, 12 years, uh, he was like a big brother. Uh, he knew what I was going through. His wife knew what I was going through. Uh, there was a time where we went to Colorado Springs in the middle of this one week of nightmares and me losing my mind. We went into a restaurant, and I was like, you've got to order me something. I can't even read the menu. Like, it's going crazy. He's like, okay, uh, how about this burger? I was like, fine. Uh, you know. About day six, his wife calls me from work, her work, and I'm at home, and she said, you need to watch Dr. Phil today (laughs) because he's going to be covering a lot of these things like self-esteem and and all this stuff that you're experiencing. Okay, you know, woohoo, good good idea. Watch Dr. Phil for half an hour. All I got was get on my website, order these CDs, and and that's the help that I was going to get. I couldn't put myself in the show, so the CDs would have to suffice. My buddy gets home, and I said, you need to get on the computer. You need to order these CDs off Dr. Phil's website. Okay. So we're in the, the computer room, and I am literally pacing back and forth behind him, going nuts. And he's like, you want these in the three-day or ten-day delivery? (laughs) The three-day delivery. You know, I started cussing at him. I was losing it. He's like, okay, okay. I'm like, well, how could you even ask that question? (laughs) You know what I'm going through. It's like three-day delivery. I need some help. (laughs) I went through one more night of this nightmare situation. And I woke up in the morning. And I thought, I could. I don't even think I can last three days for these CDs. And I look over at my dresser, and there's a Bible, and it's really dusty. I kept it around on my dresser because that's technically who I was. I was a Christian. I believed in Jesus. Um, I dusted the thing off, opened up the front cover, And I start reading where my mom had said to Matthew, uh, Merry Christmas early. It's like four months early before Christmas. It's seven years before this whole incident. And I haven't touched my Bible. It has a topical guide in the back. So I start looking up marriage, love, lust, jealousy, all of these things, self-esteem. And it's pointing me to scriptures. And God is talking to me. And I went uh, probably four hours of of reading, and I went through every emotion uh, from bawling my eyes out on the carpet to being really excited and knowing exactly what I needed to do. Getting up on their kitchen counter and dancing a jig with Christian music. Uh, And he comes home, and I said, hey, you know those CDs we ordered last night? He's like, yeah. I'm not going to need them. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, I've been reading the Bible this morning, and I know that I know that I know. I've always heard it in, in church. This is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. And if I do it God's way, 
I'll be fine. He's like, "Uh uh-uh. No, you need help. You need counseling. God's not going to heal you. And that was where the the parting happened with our uh, friendship and our agreement in that kind of sense. So I spent the next year in my bedroom watching TBN, listening to cassettes, reading the Bible, anything I could get my hands on. I was hungry for God and excited and on fire. I had told that gal, I said, you need to do everything in your power to go back with your husband. I can't have anything to do with you. Um, Sorry. And she understood. She got back with her husband. Um, But I lived the next year out of a spirit of expectancy. Like God was doing good things. And one of those times, I was in my bedroom reading, watching TV and something. I was super excited. I go outside, and at that time, I was still a smoker. Went outside, backyard. I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm looking up at the stars, and I'm like, God, you know what would be really cool? To see a shower of shooting stars. That just excites me when I see shooting stars. But, I, you know, just to have a plethora of shooting stars. That'd be so awesome. And I don't want to test you. You know, this isn't a test. I'm excited already, you know, but that would be really cool. It wouldn't cost you anything. You're the the most powerful, almighty maker of the universe. You could have sent them years ago, right? Excited. I sat out there 10 minutes with my neat neck kinked, and, and this car caught my attention as it turned this corner. I went to go look at it. And this really bright shooting star went streaming down the sky. And I was like, ah, that does it. I'm I'm good. Thank you. You know, I go back inside and I'm like, okay, do I need to read? Do I need to watch TBN? Where is it? You know, what's the next thing? And I sat there for a couple minutes. And what caught my attention was this calendar that I look at the month, and it was a calendar my roommate had given me, and it has scriptures and stuff on it, beautiful pictures, scenery pictures. And I realized that the month was in May on the calendar, but this is in November. So for six months, I haven't flipped this calendar. I'm busy doing other things. But I was like, ooh, I'll bet you God's got something on November that's going to speak. It's going to be a picture or something. I go to pull the tack out of the calendar, and there's this field of flowers. Go ahead and put that picture up. There's this field of flowers. And I'm not a flowery guy. I might be now. (laughs) But I'm pulling the tack out, and underneath the really fine print for this picture says field of shooting stars. In Iowa, and (laughs) I knew right there uh, a love like I'd never experienced. Like God was giving me this more story, and what they are is they're they're kind of a cool dart looking flower. If you put up the single, this shooting star with his tail, Uh, but I I made it personal. I was like, God, it, you know, every raindrop that fell on this field of flowers was for me. The person that was out there taking this picture, that's for me. The, the person that chose that picture to put it into a calendar, the person that was in charge of putting it on the binder, all of that was for me. Like, I made it so personal in that moment that God, uh, the maker of the universe, would, uh, you know, love on me like that. Um, So out of that whole year of expectancy, various other things happened. It was so awesome. And so a year goes by of not dating anybody, and my spirit of expectancy is like, all right, Lord, you know what my dream is. Where's she at? And... (laughs) We're working together, and uh, I noticed Teresa's innocence. I noticed her beauty. And I 
blushing face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her blushing face really is uh, amazing. Totally <laughs> ugly. But, um, no, just, uh, she was, she's just one of those pictures where I was just like, that's a, a, a godly woman who will help me raise a godly uh, boy. Uh, I was thinking more children than, than one at the time, but... Uh, so I started asking her questions, um, and uh, and I, I actually put her on an assignment for a report. Like, why are, why are you happy? What makes you smile? And if you tell me in a letter, I'll write you a letter about why I'm so happy. And so she shared with me uh, various things, and one of those things was her Mormon faith. Um, so you want to take a look? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have shared my testimony a couple times, or at least pieces of it. Um, I'm not going to go deep into Mormonism today, but if you have questions, you can always ask me. Um, but I was raised Mormon in a very active family. Um, you know, we didn't miss a Sunday, didn't miss, <laughs> you know, everything. Um, and if you don't know anything about Mormonism, just... Suffice it to say, there are, um, it's basically a different Jesus and a different gospel. Um, the, the Jesus in Mormonism uh, is not all-powerful, can't cover all your sins, so you better, you know, make sure you don't do those certain things. <laughs> um, but the Jesus we believe in is all-powerful. He paid for every single sin. And um, the gospel that uh, you know, they live by is totally works-based. You're earning your way to heaven. Um, and I was pretty good at it, just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought so at the time anyway. Um, but it's Very strong in the morals. <laughs> and as I was one thing that did attract me. Very mature. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> the, but the... Um, yeah, the gospel we believe in that's in the in the Bible is totally grace based. That it's not man's doing; it's all God's doing. So, um, anyway, if you have questions about Mormonism, feel free. Um, anyway, it kind of comes down to two decisions or two statements that I had made to live by. Uh, one was when I was about twelve. I had a friend kind of my only friend in the church, um, she decided not to go anymore because nobody was nice. Um, we didn't have other friends. And um, I was like, well, I'm not doing that. My faith is the most important thing. So that was, that was the first thing, first stand, I guess. And then the second one was when Matt started asking me questions. Of course, like a good Mormon, I was trying to convert him. Um, and earn brownie points and all that. Um, but I, I believed in absolute truth, that there was an absolute truth and that um, that truth should be able to withstand anything. And so um, that led me to, you know, reading things I shouldn't have read as a Mormon <laughs> um, and, and things like that, actually asking the questions, looking into, you know, well, what does this person say? What do, what do these people say? And why is there a problem? <laughs> you know? Um, anyway, uh, there was not a specific time or day. This was a long journey over the next five, six, I don't know how many years. <laughs> um, and pretty much it came down to God just revealing more and more of himself to me as I read the Bible. And and he just did it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, about nine months after we had started dating and talking about God and, you know, our beliefs and, and stuff, um, I had come to the conclusion I couldn't believe the Mormon church was true anymore, uh, but I didn't know what to believe. Um, so then it was time to marry. <laughs> <laughs> we could be equally yoked, and it might take a while. Um, mm -hmm. 
at that time when we were dating, she was going to college uh, in Pueblo, and uh, I would often drive her down to college, drop her off, ride a bicycle or take a drive around Pueblo, go fishing, something, uh, try not to stink when I came back and picked her up for lunch, and we would go out for a date, and then I would take her back to the school, pick her back up, um, and drive her home. Um, and at one point, as we're still, uh, at least I was still working at the diner, I was Big Daddy's Diner is where I was working, that was where we met. She was waiting tables and I was her assistant manager. Um, I had a nightmare concerning a relationship, go figure. Um, I was supposed to be at work at 7 a.m. I woke up at 5 a.m. from this nightmare where I had driven her down to college. We're sitting in our pickup, or my pickup, and she looks over at me with her beautiful face and innocence and says, do you think you would mind if so-and-so and I went to the movies together? Oh, I instantly filled with rage, and I'm getting out of the truck, but there's this loaf of bread in the, the front seat, and I grab that, and I slam the door. I start walking the parking lot like I'm going to go home, but fine, have your new boyfriend kind of thing, and I chuck this loaf of bread up in the air, and it's kind of like I watched it, and it hit the ground, and I wake up. Well, my heart's going like crazy. I'm like, oh, what is, what's all this about? Uh, you know, and so I'm trying to ask God about it. Uh, like, oh, what's all this about? And, and I, I can't go back to sleep. I'm too worked up. My heart's going crazy. I'm like, I don't really want to go into work two hours early, which would be kind of nice for everybody else. They'd be happy that I did all the work, you know, first thing. I was like, no. It's best to, to read the Bible early in the morning so you can sit there and meditate on it all day. That's what I'll do. So at 5 a.m., I'm looking in the topical guide again, and I look at jealousy. Well, the first place it points me to is in Proverbs chapter 6. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to read the entire chapter, get all the context. And it talks about wisdom. It talks about the, the wayward wife. And in verse 26... It says, the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread. <laughs> All right, Lord, you want to tell me something here. Teresa's a prostitute. <laughs> no, we're engaged. We've been, you know, this whole relationship has been around God. I don't, you know, she's never given me an indication that she's this prostitute. So 15 minutes into meditating about this whole thing, God reveals to me that back when I was 18 years old, my first love, 18 years old, I got involved with a married woman, had two kids. Uh, he didn't had two kids. Yes. You didn't she, have two kids. Thank you for clarifying all that. <laughs> I haven't had any kids but all of her, thank the Lord. Um she had two kids, but it didn't take very long before she said, you know, you're just a cook. I need more security than that. So I didn't make enough money. Off she goes, and I'm heartbroken. And uh, from that point on, um, God revealed that, well, first of all, what happens when the loaf of bread you bought at the store gets moldy and it gets stale? What do you do with that loaf of bread? You throw it away. My self-esteem and my mentality from that point on in any relationship, I don't make enough money. I'm not smart enough. I don't look good enough. I'm not funny enough. All the different reasons why I'm moldy and I'm stale and they're going to throw me away and go get somebody new. God was telling me to take that loaf of bread mentality and chuck it because Teresa was a pure and clean heart. I had given my life to God and said, this is a lamp unto my feet. It led me to Teresa. We were engaged, uh, in love. And he was like,
like chuck that loaf of bread mentality in your grill. Every time a little bit of that started to, to poke its little head up, stomp on it with the authority of God. No, God told me not to have dry soup. And I'm not going to. And Teresa was a good girl. It wasn't the fact that her parents said, you take care of her or else. You know, it wasn't her friends going, oh, you don't know what you're doing. It was that moment where God said, don't be jealous. You know, um, so an awesome uh, revelation from God. Does that mean that we were free of all the problems? No, I lied to her about smoking over and over. <laughs> Broke her heart. Um, but know. I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the the first several years probably of our marriage was a little rough. Um, we both had things that God had to deal with. Um, so yeah, he he has quit smoking. By the way, he's been smoke free for I don't know how long, forever. Yeah, uh, <laughs> long enough um, <laughs> and I had um, nightmares and insomnia for like years I I was afraid to go to sleep because my nightmares were so bad and um, I was delivered from those at a naturally supernatural conference thing we went to which I didn't even know if I believed in that <laughs> but yeah I've been sleeping good pretty much ever since um, we um, oh, he had racked up a ton of debt. <laughs> yeah, about forty thousand dollars, earning twelve, fourteen dollars an hour. No light at the end of the tunnel. So that um, obviously caused some stress. But my my mom but sold her house back in Kansas, lent me all the money we paid her back for six years, mm -hmm. uh, which was good. So um, we're debt free. Debt -free. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so when, when we got out of debt, we decided to buy our house, and I was done with college then. We decided to start our family, and, um, and yeah, I started, uh, we began going to the vineyard, um, the other vineyard. I don't know how many years it's been now, but, um, God had led us there. I totally didn't want to go. It was scary, and stuff and here I am Is that on now? she's learned to Sorry. love it um anyway I started working at the pregnancy center while I was pregnant with Oliver and that was kind of a, another turning point for us where um you know we we went to different churches and stuff when we were married at first and um, but when I went to the pregnancy center, I was working with these ladies who would come in and just say, oh, yeah, God was telling me this this morning, or God did this yesterday, and I'm like, whoa, like, like, he talks to you? <laughs> like, I mean, that was like the first, like, you can have a relationship with God where, he, you know, you interact with him like a person, like every day. Um, so that was like a major turning point for me and, um, yeah, just started, you know, reading more often, uh, not every day or anything, um, but just, just getting to pursue him a little bit more. And, um, anyway, we were, uh, we There's still had some disconnect. <laughs> yeah, we, we still definitely had some disconnect. Um, and Three years ago. just couldn't, yeah, couldn't quite put our fing finger on what was, or I couldn't put my finger on what was, what was going on. And, um, anyway, so, yeah, uh, about three years ago on leap day, um, <laughs> so we had gone to church and, um, and Corey had spoken about Adam and Eve and how they were 
naked and unashamed with each other. There were no secrets. It was totally transparent. It was total freedom and, and how, you know, they were in each other's presence and God's presence, and there was nothing in the way of their intimacy. And um, I was like, I really want that. That's what I'm looking for. And I, you know, we're not connecting somehow. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, well, the previous year, I had tried out for a full-time position at the symphony because um, I'm a flautist. <laughs> anyway, um, I subbed for them several times, but I didn't get in. Uh, I didn't get the full-time position. It ended up changing anyway, and then somebody else got the sub job. And Anyway, well, I felt like I knew why. <laughs> I felt like God was protecting me from getting in a relationship that would have been unhealthy. Um, there had been a, a man there that was attractive and showed interest and, you know, was friendly and stuff. And... I felt like I was, uh, well, I was flattered, um, but I felt like God was taking me out of any position that would compromise, um, you know, our marriage or whatever, and, um, and I was like, I have to tell Matt, like, this is this guilty secret I have, even though, you know, nothing happened, whatever, I felt guilt about it, and I was like, okay, this is interfering with our intimacy, so I, um, yeah, uh, it was three years ago on Leap Day, <laughs> we had this great conversation before after that. Uh, after Corey's sermon on Adam and Eve, we were at home talking about it. Talking about grace. We go to bed, and she's all like, stuff. I got something to tell you. So I tell him. And he totally didn't react at all. And I was like, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, like, did you like, hear what I said? Yeah. Like, it um, doesn't matter to you? Know, you this know, this is the what? same jealousy-ridden guy that, you know. <laughs> all the while, I'm going. <laughs> okay, God <laughs> wants me to tell her now. And she said, do you have something to tell me? Yeah. And I did. It was, it was a moment where I got to tell her. For about five years, I've been looking and longing. Last time was about six months ago. And I think I've been set free from it. I was glad I wasn't caught in it. But I knew that God was calling me to tell her. And she received it with so much power, so much grace. She was so graceful in it that we stayed up till three or four in the morning at like we both bawled in each other's arms three years ago, confessing to each other and becoming transparent so that God could work in so I had, um, I didn't know anything about John Wimber except for his name, and um, <laughs> and that he, at some point, I had heard that he had a vision of the sky being like honeycomb, and honey was just dripping down on everybody, and that um, the honey was like God's grace, and some people, you know, would like just embrace it and bathe in it and other people were like trying to get out of it and shake it off and stuff and I just felt like that uh, moment of just confession and and stuff we were just being covered in God's honey <laughs> like in his grace and um, that was like the beginning of this huge healing process <laughs> which has Through all kinds been of stuff. bad and good yeah, you know, we've had we've had arguments. The first year was extremely hard. Owning up to, to anything I've done wrong has been really hard for me to do anyway. Um, but every time that I'm met with grace, which, you know, 
grace is exactly why we're all here. Mm-hmm. And, and I've seen more of God's grace in my life uh, that gives me a better understanding when I read it, read about it. I mean, Jesus covers all of your sins so that you can stand freely in the presence of God that the good news about grace is so good when you realize it in reality when it really hits home you can't help but share that grace with people Mm -hmm. Uh, and I guess that would be the that's kind of just um, our ending note I know that's an awkward place to end but we just wanted to share the goodness of God and the hope he's, he's had so in good. our lives and he continues to transform us and he's um, he's done such marvelous things. I mean, we kept it short, so <laughs> we haven't even shared, you know, and I'm sure that so many of you have your own stories. But um, yeah, we just wanted to spread his goodness. The and goodness of God leads to repentance which is a a change of heart and a new way of thinking and encourage everybody Uh, Mm -hmm. transparency Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the bible says confess your sins to one another and i think i'd heard uh at this last conference it said confess your sins to one another um confess them to god for forgiveness confess them to god to be forgiven Confess them to one another to be healed. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the the confession with Teresa, um, it's just been healing, um, freeing. And so if there's things that come to mind, just know that, that God wants transparency as he did in the garden. You know, just to be ourselves be free with each other and to be open and to have this family right here share each other's burdens. Amen. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Thank you guys so much. What's that? Yeah, let's pray for the last one. Yeah, you know, they just, they lead us so much in worship. You guys see them up here all the time, but uh, they, they've no, not really shared their story. And, um, yeah. you know, we just know that God has uh, wants to do so much more in you and through you. So, yeah, uh, yeah just extend a hand as we lift yeah. these guys up. Lord, we're just so grateful and thankful for Matt and Teresa to be a part of this church and to share their light and their love with us. It's so encouraging to be around Matt and just how honest he is and how brave he is and to have him as a friend, Lord, is so grateful. And so, Lord, we're so thankful that they get to share that with this whole congregation. And when they worship, their hearts are pure and they love to worship you, Lord. And so we're so grateful to have that worship team here and all that they do and all the love that they give. And so, Lord, we just ask that you continue to provide for them richly bless them in every way pour out all that you have we thank you for the plans and purposes for you have for their lives we just see great things ahead and so we're so thankful in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. bless you guys yeah